Numerical Computation, Chapter 3, Video 3. We now study linear spline, that is, piecewise linear polynomial interpolation. We see if n equals to 1, going back to the definition of a spline of degree 1, we see that this results in a piecewise affine function, which is straight line between two neighboring knots. Let's look at the geometric interpretation of it. So let's say, generically, we have um, one T0, T1, T2, T3, four knots and three intervals, where their values are Y0, Y1, Y2, and Y3. And if you want to find a linear spline going through these four knots, all you need to do is connecting the two neighboring points with a straight line here, and the straight line between these two, and the straight line between that two. So, graphically, this linear spline is quite simple. So the requirement for this will be, your spline has to first interpolate the data, so S0 at T0 is Y0, and then at all the inner knots for I from 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1, approaching from the left must equal to approaching from the right must equal to the value it interpolates, and also the last point, the right end, has to be interpolated as well. We now want to find an equation that describes Si as a function of x. So we see this will be a linear polynomial, which requires two things to determine it. That is, one is the slope, and the other fix a point that it goes through. So since the straight line goes through these two points, ti, yi, and ti plus 1, yi plus 1, we can easily write out the equation for the straight line, which is given here using the point and slope form of the line. So. The slope is this quantity, yi minus plus 1 minus yi over ti plus 1 minus ti, and x minus ti, and then you add yi on top. And this holds for i equals to 0, 1, all the way to n minus 1. Let's now take a look at the accuracy theorem for linear spline interpolation. Assuming I have a set of knots um, sorted, and, and let's denote the interval length between two neighboring knots, ti plus 1 minus ti, we call it hi for interval number i, and we denote another quantity h, which is the maximum of all these hi's. And let fx be the given function, and s of x be the linear spline that interpolates the function such that s evaluated ti equals to f evaluated at ti for i going through all the knots. Then for um, any x on the interval from t0 to tn, we have the following. So the accuracy actually depends on properties of the function f. In part 1 of the theorem, if now f double derivative exists and is continuous and bounded, then, then the estimate looks like this. So um, in this max sign here, this piece shall look similar or familiar to us, and that is actually the linear interpolation. So for polynomial, if you interpolate with the linear polynomial of a function on the interval from t, from a to b, and this would be the error formula, which we obtained earlier. So you go through all this, and you take the max of it, and that's the estimate. And you can further simplify this by taking the max of all these hi's, and taking the max of the double derivative over the whole interval. So we, in the end, arrive at this expression. 
Now, in the second part of the theorem, if f has less regularity, that is, if I only have f prime that is existing and continuous and bounded, and f double prime might go to infinity, then the estimate has to be weakened. So, um, the standard estimate we had for polynomial interpolation cannot be applied anymore, and we have to modify with a somewhat weaker condition. Okay, so we will not go into the details of exactly how this is being derived, and we just make the observation that the power on the h, which was 2 here, and now reduces to 1 in this estimate. So from this discussion, it should be apparent to us now that if one wants to minimize the error, then it is necessary to add more knots where f has a large first derivative in case number two, or f has a large second derivative in case number one. So when n equals to 2, we end up with quadratic spline, which is a piecewise quadratic polynomial interpolation. The details are being outlined in the book and in the lecture notes, and I will um, let you do a self-study on this topic. And the reason for that is the derivation is rather easy. You could easily read it, and also quadratic spline is actually not that much used for reasons we'll be discussing later. So next video we will move into cubic spline.